Is it a hot or a yeast? I'm gonna guess the yeast. Let me take that back, Chip. It is a hot. You're trying to fool me, huh? In this Northern Brewer video, we're putting Omega Star Party Thialized Yeast to the test in a split batch of the most simple beer recipe we could think of. And the results could not be more impressive. We'll take you through the brew day, talk fermentation and our expectations, and then give you not only our tasting notes, but some fun side-by-side -side blind tasting reactions from some of our Northern Brewer World Headquarter cohorts. What's going on everybody, Chip and William. We're rocking it here at aforementioned World Headquarters. Uh, Eye-opening project that we recently brewed, fermented, uh -huh. taste tested uh, to show just how much impact these Omega yeast thialized series strains have on beer. Just to refresh everyone's memory real quick, thialized yeast kind of blew up, right, in the last couple of years. We had Cosmic Punch, and then last year we got Star Party, Helio Gazer, Lunar Crush. Lunar Crush. Tell yep. me yep. Cliff Notes version of what a thialized yeast is. Yeah, so they are yeast strains that Omega's come out with that uh, unlock styles that are bound up in normal, typically malt is the most of it is what we've been seeing in newer research and then some in hops too, but it's typically bound so normal brewer's yeast doesn't release it so we are not able to smell or taste it. Um, but their thials are basically aroma compounds that have for omega strains, they are very tropical, so passion fruit, um, guava, grapefruit peel in that category. They kind of took some of their popular strains that already existed and thialized them. So Star Party, which we're going to have, is their West Coast Ale 1 uh, thialized. Cosmic Punch and Helio Gazer are different degrees of thialization of British 5. Yep. And Lunar Crush is the thialized version of Mexican Lager. So when these all first came out, we kind of did this really complicated <laughs> right out of the gate brew and uh, we put these stylized strains up against our swig of sunbeams. This is a kit with a bunch of malts, not only a bunch of hops, but they go in at different points. So we decided to dial it way back for this experiment and do a smash beer, smash if you don't know, single malt and single hop. So one variety of malt, one variety of hop. Really the idea here is just like let these two things kind of shine and really simplify it yep yep and see the actual difference see what that is bringing to it before we get into all this smashy fun ahead we're excited about our past thialized yeast content as well and we'd love for you to see it from one-on-one -on -one conversations with omega yeast about usage recommendations to our own much more complicated brewing trials check out the links to those videos plus a collection of more technical articles from omega yeast in the video description and as always you know please like subscribe and share it with the home brewer you hope to impress smash that like button oh smash <laughs> that like button william <laughs> says man that's right let's talk about this super simple recipe and a bit about brew day yeah so uh like you already said it's a really simple recipe pilsner malt sots hops and then the yeast strain so we kept it pretty simple for the pilsner malt we went with north star pills a lot of the research shows that the lower kilmine rates leaves more of the precursors for the thiols there for the yeast to get to. So North Star Pills was, is one of our lower kiln malts, so we went with that. Um, and then there are a few different hops you can choose from. Lance from Omega really says Zots often. Cascade is another one. Two classic and cheap <laughs> hops. Um, Definitely, you don't need to go into that mosaic citra. You don't need those flashy things. In fact, you want Zot because the oil breakdown and thiol precursors are there and that's the best choices. So uh, for brew day is a 10 gallon batch. Like I said, it was pretty simple. So um, it was 22 pounds of the North Star pills, aiming for an OG about 1050, so pretty middle of the road. Uh, for hop additions, we did one and a half ounces at the 60 minute mark for this 10 gallon batch. So pretty, pretty small uh, bittering load. And then right before flame out at the five minute edition, we went with three ounces of the Zots hops uh, for the 10 gallon batch. Otherwise, everything else was a basic brew day, nothing special on the, on the brewing side at all. So you split it. We're now in five, two five gallon conical fermenters, uh, yeast pitch. Yep. Tell me about fermentation. And some of the notes you gave me along the way when you're like, oh, 
I caught a little whiff as I was saying, like, kind of tell me about the sensory experience yeah. as these are fermented. Yeah, they are, uh, uh, the thial yeasts are fun. They, you, you get it right pretty quickly. So uh, both were pitched at the same temp, same pitch rate. Um, pretty quickly early on, you could start smelling passion fruit, um, a little sulfur, but not, not like stressed sulfur fermentation. It's just kind of characteristic with those thials. They are sulfur compounds, uh, but really just tropical fruit. And the other, the, the control, which was just West Coast one was a normal beer. Clean? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to insult it, but it wasn't pushing out. There was not guava flying out of the fermenter and there's definitely guava coming out of the other one. Yeah. Um, so through our brewing trials with these stylized yeast, we definitely had a, a, a expectation uh, and the, it was met. These beers definitely threw us for a loop. We're going to tell you our notes in a second, but as uh, LeVar Burton likes to say, you don't have to take our word for it. We want to turn the mic over to some co-workers who we brought in for a blind side-by-side -side taste testing. We asked them to taste the beer, uh, pick a favorite, and then guess what was different. We told them just one ingredient was different between these two beers. FYI, as they're talking, beer A, the West Coast Ale version, is in their left hand, referred to as beer A. Beer B, the Star Party thialized version, is in their right hand. Take it away, Derek. <laughs> hello, hello. Are you there? I got that deep voice. Alrighty. Here's beer A. Pretty good. Pretty good. I like that. It's got that that mellow taste. B. You want me to try B now? Mmm. I taste the difference. I'm trying to figure out what it is. This one's got I, I, I noticed this one's got like a exotic kind of like a taste to it where it's just like it brings the flavor of the beer out more than that one i would definitely pay more for b versus a and i would prefer b over a this is a cheers it's got a, a pretty dry finish i'd say it's very um malty kind of at the top yeah it's kind of like a wheat beer i guess this is b cheers to b this has got more of a of like a tartness to it kind of like hits you here a little bit more so i'd say it's a little bit brighter it's got like that squished uh kind of uh taste this is a cheers to a again yeah this is a, a little bit more like sit back style so what am i supposed to choose my opinion is b this is a little the bitterness comes through on a uh, and, and a little bit more and, and this is just a little bit more bright and so i like that let me let me do a spit take. What is that? Now when you're editing, you'll have something to choose from, you know? I'm just giving you options. I feel like what's weird is it seemed so obvious the other day when we sampled this. Right away I was like, that one is fruitier. Well now I'm embarrassed. This one just has that like I don't I feel like harsh isn't the right word, but a more hoppy, a little more bitter. It's like, just that like, not like there's fruit in it, but you're like more of like aroma of niceness in A. I like A more. Is A thialized? What? It's not my first row, yeah. <laughs> this one's fruitier. I would, I would almost like go as far as like something with orange. Like, like this one immediately kind of seemed like a very like mild blue moon almost sort of style. I think there's something fruitier in here. It's like a normal like ale or wheat ale. This one, maybe, maybe it could be fruit. It could just be like grapefruit at the end of the day. There is that possibility. Cause this is just feels a little more bitter, but it feels bitter in a hoppy sense. Yeah, it feels like a stronger hop profile is used in this one. They seem very similar, but this one's got more of a bitterness to it. Like if you want like a more stronger, bolder flavor of beer. I like this one way more. I definitely like this one more. And this one, it's not that it's bad by any means. This is still a good one. But yeah, there's like an earthier vibe to it. That's why like I, I almost leap to like, like hops. There's more hops added to here or like a different hop entirely. And I'm sure whatever you end up telling me, I'm going to be like way off. That's my fear. They'll probably sound dumb because I'm way off. <laughs> it's actually quite different from from A. Actually, it ha this actually has a more of an earth tone to it as well. Actually, but with A, 
I would have to say that it's definitely like a summer kind of beer. Like it's very refreshing, uh, not too sweet. But I kind of am more leaning towards B because I like the earth tones because like it has like more of a, a mouthfeel to it. So it gives more of a complexity on how I can describe it as. Hence with B, I'm tasting something, uh, the aftertaste where it has more fruit to it as well. Like I can taste like, um, like what was it? Like not an orange, like a grapefruit, like something citrusy, but not too overpowering. Yeah, I know it might not be hops. It might be way off with like saying there's like a stronger hop profile. It could just be a different fruit added to it, but that's what jumps out to me immediately. Um, are you gonna tell me, are you gonna spoil it? Is it a hop? Or a yeast? I'm going to guess the yeast. Let me take that back, Chip. It is a hop. You, you're trying to fool me, huh? You know, I really wouldn't know. I'd guess that the hops is different. Um, but I, I'm not really, I don't know that much about making this stuff to really know if it's the yeast or the hops. So, um, but this is, a, yeah, it's a little bit brighter. I would prefer this one on a hot sunny day. Uh, B. You can really taste the difference once you go back and forth. But I, I, I gotta, I gotta say it's the hops. Am I correct? Is it the hops that's the difference, or is it the yeast? It's weird that the different. There's no difference in hops between the two, but this one seems hoppier to me, like a little bit more bitter, just like hoppier. Well, that's weird. Those are my thoughts. <laughs> Don't put me on camera. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that yeast can alter just about anything. There's some that can produce more alcohol. There's some that produce very funky flavors. Just there's so many types out there that will create such diversity of beers out there. It's incredible in my opinion. And it makes me want to explore more into this knowledge and how I can do it in my homebrew experiences as well. A most excellent kind of closing thought, I think, on the staff tasting notes from Anthony there that uh, just super eye-opening. We've been tasting this now for probably about a month. Yeah. Uh, full transparency. It has evolved mm -hmm. slightly. Um, but, yeah, tell me what you think about these two beers. Yeah, I think we both noted uh, right after kegging the West Coast one, very malt forward. Uh, we were both picking up like a lemony very kick characteristic yeah. and i wonder if that's why a lot of the people were saying kind of blue moon you get that citrus character uh, very kind of middle of the road pale not like super bitter or super aggressive any which way yeah i think my original note was like saltine cracker mm -hmm. and like maybe like a lemon curd might even be too rich but like a lemon jelly of some sort like just those two things hit now i do feel it's opened it's kind of mellowed into kind of like this orange pale ale yeah yep. fairly innocent orange that forward really, pale ale the malt character is pretty nice i like that uh, north star pills it's pretty good as they noted when you go from one to the other and back this will seem way different so this mofo mm -hmm. right here just i wouldn't even call it big and that's why i kind of like this experiment it's not the biggest over your head guava passion no. fruit like some of those ones we had with swig of sunbeam some of those yeah. were just like biting into a juicy overripe mango this is more like a pale ale with some tropical hops in there and maybe to me guava maybe a little bit of guava yeah. juice added to it something to give it a little bit of guava character but not not just this crazy milkshake guava type of thing um, right i was gonna say in our day in the, the days and times of the current like fruited everything fruited sours fruited blondes fruited kolsch's i if i tasted these side by side i think i would have thought this had a puree yeah in it and not a knock you over the head amount of it but exactly. it could also be argued that maybe it has a new world hop um something like that but i would not i personally would not have guessed it was a yeast <laughs> yeah <laughs> until sure. these last couple of years yeah. were like yeast are the new yep. hop a little bit yeah exactly i mean i gave both of these to my wife too and she's like oh what fruit's in this yeah and i was like ah, none yeah no so the main kind of takeaway i take from this is like super simple recipe i could see homebrewers utilizing it for a fun side by side just to kind of train your brewing brain mm -hmm. but really i could see pro brewers using this to really cut down on that cost of hops because i would have guessed that this was some fancier new hop more expensive per ounce to put into yeah. your beer than 
what four and a half ounces of zots yeah over in a 10, 10 gallon yeah. yeah so i think there's something to be said here for kind of playing with these i as a smash it's good i could definitely see it being having maybe a little specialty malt maybe throwing another hop in there just to add a layer because it also yeah it's not one note but it definitely seems to kind of just like this is this thing and this is this thing yeah. there's not a whole lot of like 10 minutes later like oh now it's this yeah. other thing granted as we said before that when you go back to a from b it's like maltier drier it almost comes off as more bitter even though more of our yep. co-workers said this is bitter and we were commenting this is even a lot of people this is a little bit of brightness to it uh, yes it seems like it it's a little bit more tart or bright and i'm sure it's just the the guava playing with us or that tropical the impressions of tropical fruit in there playing with us so some more takeaways though just real quick you said more smash please yeah I, more simple beers i mean two hearted they didn't go wrong and like we do so many things that are just simple beers and they come out amazing actually yeah. instead of too much crap <laughs> kitchen sink yeah everything yeah, which also can be good but i've been more blown away by smash beers than other beers i think when we were talking about something else you might uh use star party in that's something simple ish you threw out new zealand pills yeah new zealand pills style i mean it's an ale so it wouldn't really be a lager but i get a lot of that sauvin blanc uh nelson sauvin grape characteristic that you'll get in new zealand pills there so i can see doing almost this same recipe but then dry hopping it with the nelson to kind of increase that get a little bit more of the dank and the diesel that that has and kind of round it out to your earlier comment like it's a good beer but it could use a little bit more depth i think and you also suggested maybe the idea of blending a thialized yeast with another strain something maybe even more characterful than a west coast yeah that's something the uh, omegas kind of said that lance has said that a few times about blending it with other stuff to keep those thiols down because you'll get thiol bombs like this pretty quickly so to me I think that'd be great in a saison, but I think you'd want to do 10, 20 percent of that wort fermented with the the thialized yeast, and then the rest of that wort fermented with um, like mm. saison's monster or the uh, French saison, something easy to work with, but get that classic spicy saison character, and then you just get this nice like fruity character as well. Mm. So ferment separate versus trying to pitch a blend of that's what i would do because you never know different yeast strains have different uh, nutrient requirements and whatnot so if i had to put these in three words beer tasting beer yeah uh, malty crisp kind of citrusy and then its cousin is much more unctuous rich exotic which we heard several times with tropical exotic yep. for us midwesterners it's exotic yeah that's uh that's some barbecue sauce not ketchup <laughs> <laughs> all right well we uh really suggest that you do an experiment like this split a batch brew two five gallon batches get the mother strain or the parent strain and the thylized version it's eye-opening how different it is i think you could have a lot of fun it's a good party trick yeah yeah <laughs> i've done a lot of side by sides and i think this is the easiest way to get a drastically different and to your point, part trick where people are just like, no. It was fun, like being out there and like watching people like, whoa, this I think is they way were, different. Yeah, that, I, I was convinced half of them thought we were pranking them and I don't, <laughs> was my mouth blue now? I don't. What are we drinking? <laughs> uh, so yeah, tons of video links in the video description, blog links, check out the Thylite Swig of Sunbeams. I'm not throwing it under the bus at all. It is also a, an exceptionally fun stylized beer kit uh definitely way more hop forward and everything uh but we'll also put this simple recipe in case you missed it as we we're explaining it in the video description below please let us know your experiment uh your experience with these yeah. strains because we're always out to learn a little bit more about them especially what kinds of grists and hot bills you put them through because it seems like those are very particular with the thiols yeah they definitely call out barley a lot Lance has in their in their newest studies so it'd be interesting to see that because I know a lot of people play with corn wheat and whatnot and that might not be giving you mm. the same amount of thiols so oh yeah like if you're a hazy brewer you might actually be really just kind of like not getting the most out of this anyway yeah yep still getting them just not as much as you potentially could have so yeah all right nerd out y'all go check out those links and let us know what you got brewing until next time
Side by side, cheers. Ha, 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 ha.